guys, it's the Pantry Party Show with your host at DJ Blattner. Today we have a very special guest at Holly Granger's with us. She is the queen of cooking videos and she's going to tell us all about what the heck is a virtual snack date. So excited to get this party started, are you? The Pantry Party Show is about to begin right now. Hey everybody, this is an exciting day. What the heck is a virtual snack uh, snack date. I don't know. I'm so excited to find out. Ad Holly Granger is our guest. She's a longtime friend. Uh, but here's what I will tell you. Uh, she is the queen of cooking videos. So we're going to get some uh, tips and tricks, I feel, from her. I'm going to pump those out of her. Um, and I came up with a very interesting thing that I can't wait to share with her. So let's get her in without further ado. Holly Granger, come on. Pantry Party Show. Be prepared for a warm welcome, everybody. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Ah! Ooh, I love the disco ball. We meet that in our house. We are the dance party central. Like, we turn the lights off and have a disco ball, and it's disco party all the time. Here's what I will say I need to have a pantry party without a disco ball, girl. So, I, I am all for you getting one. I think it's like $11.99 or something like that on the Amazon. I mean, you know, it's nothing fancy, kid. There's like, uh, it's going around by sheer elbow grease. <laughs> hey, whatever works. Whatever works. I mean, yeah. I think that's what makes it the most fun. I'm going to adjust my camera. Okay, at Holly Granger. First off, Holly is with an E, just so we're e, I know. Okay. An E-Y and an A-I, just to make it really complicated. But here's what I will say. I, I, when I was like, all right, how do I make sure that everybody knows how to get to at Holly Granger? And I was like, here's how we do it. It's Holly with an E, but also it's grain. Like she's a dietitian. Like it's grain germ, <laughs> right? It worked out so well. Yes. It's so, I mean, I mean it's so good. We had on, um, uh, at Champagne Nutrition, you know, her yes. first name is Ginger. And it's like, yes. come on, between her first name and your last name having grain in it, you guys are born to be dietitians. It just works that way. Although, she, you know, Champagne, Ginger, that, that that's pretty fun. But grain <laughs> works too. I love some grain, you know. I it love it. Well, house. So here's here's what I wanted to uh, disclose to you here in the yes. public format. As I was creating the post today and I was putting together your bio, you know, I feel like you have a pretty humble on your website of like who you are and what you do. How I first became familiar with you and how I will always know you, and I think most dietitians know you as, the queen of the cooking video. I feel like you have done more cooking videos than any dietitian ever. I feel like you were doing them before anybody was doing them. Can you talk to me about your history with yeah. cooking videos? Oh, yes. Yeah. So I used to work, uh, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, which, you know, people would be like, Alabama, what? But it's so convenient because what used to be Time Inc., we used to be Southern Progress, and then Time Inc., and now Meredith, you know, so it's been known by all kind of companies, but it's where Southern Living and Cooking Light, Health Magazine used to be. Birmingham is a hub for food and all of these kind of things. And so, you know, long story super short, when I got out of college and finished my internship, started at Oxmoor House, worked in the book division doing cookbooks, went over to magazines, worked at Southern Living, and really kind of fell in love with the whole public speaking idea and representing Southern Living at different women's conferences and whatnot to speak. And then about, gosh, now 12 plus years ago, there was this whole um, movement of like, I think we're going to start this digital hub. You know, it was very, there were a few baby blogs, which are now massive, huge blogs, Elise Bauer, you know, these people with the huge blogs, the kitchen was brand new. And then, so we're going to start this thing called myrecipes.com and we want you to come be the food editor for it and it's just going to be a hub and we want you to do tv for it and we want you to do online video and it was like okay whatever so you know we, we did the training and I remember going to fancy food show I'm sure you've been to that too literally we didn't even have a website I've, I'm walking around with like a printout of what it was going to be in my card and just crazy and it literally went from where I would schlep like I would fly places in all these different cities and schlep my bag with my slow cookers and rent a car and all this kind of stuff, do TV segments. And then we started a series called Dinner Tonight. And it was based on the series in Cooking Light Magazine called Dinner Tonight. And so we just turned all of those healthy dinner recipes into videos. 
And literally it first started where I would just stand and read the teleprompter, which I got really good at. And then it was like, just let me cook. Cause we had another lady we, whose hands and she was a little older than me. And so, and, and just different body type. And so you see like my face and then Debbie's hands would kind of come in and it was just strange. So finally I was like, just let me cook. And so we started slow and from there, I did about 800 videos for <laughs> dinner tonight. Well, you just I mean, we would literally slow we, your we would block out. Oh, yeah. Slow your roll. You can't, girl, you can't just say under your breath, like, oh, yeah, so I did like 800 videos. I mean, what the heck? Lot. Like, that yeah. is crazy. <laughs> we did we did quite a few. Uh, I mean, it, it was literally to the point where, and that was back when there was money, you know, so we had craft services and and that was back when I was like, I think I need a cell phone so I can like access my internet, you know, and access my email because we would take two weeks off, find a location. It's before we had a studio. We find these beautiful houses in Birmingham and literally just camp out. And it was great. I used to have like a wardrobe budget and I had makeup and all this stuff. So those were the glory days. And then I started a series on Cooking Light called Real Life Nutrition. So, I mean, where it's like I'm rock climbing, kind of similar stuff to you do in Chicago. Just where it's like I'm playing tennis, you know, and then we're talking about hydration and just doing all the things. Um, and then when I left and started my own business uh, six or so years ago, just tried to keep that momentum, couldn't really at the same pace, but have really jumped in and enjoyed doing videos with my two little girls. And we've done a lot of live videos, which are really nice because the lives are just kind of, I mean, like this, it's just real person, the dog starts barking, we don't worry about editing it out. It's just, it is what it is. And it's a lot less pressure um, to have, have everything be so perfect. Cause I was, I kind of was back in that school of thought where it was like, there was a smudge on the plate. You know, this was pre, we want crumbs in our pictures. You know, this was when everything was very clean. And if there was a spot on the pan, we'd stop the whole production and clean it. And it just, it just changed so much. So now oh. it's nice to be able to just turn on the camera and go. And that's, I've loved technology for that. But it has been a whole lot of fun over the years and something that I just continue to love doing. And I'm always looking for like a new way to do it. Like how else can I try something new or switch it up? And so doing Instagram or Facebook lives, especially it's, um, it's a fun way to quickly connect and jump on when you have something to say and okay I've loved all, right. all right stop yeah. already stop already here's yeah. what I want to know <laughs> have you really leaned into owning the fact that you're a freaking queen of cooking videos like have you done it where you are I mean I know back in the day I mean I remember seeing like webinars and stuff that you would do I mean is this something that you're passionate about doing and like sharing your magical ways like because I mean bottom line is you're a freaking queen of this, and I feel like that needs to be the ownership right now. I think I need to hire you to be my ah! like, to be my coach to be like, come on, do it. Because there was, I mean, there really was a point in time when, especially when I went on my own, that it was like, you know, I was so used to having three cameras and lighting people and a makeup person and a food stylist and a prop stylist. I mean, I got completely spoiled, and so then you're on your own, and all of a sudden it's like. Oh, uh, but I have, I've done, a, I haven't had it. Um, I've done a decent number of talks here and there, especially for dietitians on just the behind the scenes. And like, there's such a different way. I think there's such a different presentation style for when you are presenting on TV, when you're presenting to a live audience, when you're presenting in a video, when you're presenting to a hundred people. And so it really is like those you kind of take on different personalities. You, you know that, you know how it is because you've done it too. But, but I do, I mean, I would love to do it more. I need to lean into it more. So uh, yeah. I'm going to rely on you, Dawn, to keep okay. me Okay. Well, because I, as I was reading your website, I was like, you know, she, I do feel like it's humble. It's like this idea There's of not like, videos dude, on you, there. you own the space and you've grown with it. And even that line that you just said is like, and I'm always looking for new ways to do it. It's like, that's when you know you're passionate about something, when you're not just like plugging and chugging and doing it. You're like, well, you know, is there another, maybe I don't want somebody else's hands that look yeah, different yeah, exactly. than mine doing it. It's like, it came from that to now, like you said, this, this more authentic style, which I actually think is interesting that you were able to transition to that because there's a lot of friends 
that I have in, in many TV businesses that, mm -hmm. you know, we're used to sort of the glam squad and all of the oh, yeah. bells and whistles, and that it's hard to produce this authentic lowbrow uh, stuff, right? That it's yeah. like, it's actually, it, it became somewhat of a hindrance because it was like, oh my gosh, if it's not this, you know, elaborate, ta-da, um, oh, I don't even want to yes. do it. Well, and it's hard because, I mean, I use my iPhone for just about everything, which may or may not be the highest quality. I mean, I, I have, have a good, you might I, see I my ring everything. light, you know, I have a ring light and one other little light here. I'm not that great at, at editing. Um, I, I use Betsy Ramirez, who really has become a good person uh, for helping dietitians with video. And I'll jump in and, and help Betsy here or there or rely on her to help me. So I'm, I'm not afraid to outsource things, especially when the client wants like pans and pans. And it's just like, you know what? I will come up with the whole idea, but if you want to tape it, awesome. Um, but when it is my personality and they want a, a human person speaking, then it is definitely something that, that I enjoy doing. And, and I mean, a lot of times, especially if I do things for clients or sponsors, you know, you kind of have to say like, are we wanting high budget? Like we, are you wanting, I mean, I've had people before clients be like, we want this kind of camera rented and this and this and this. And I'm like, Okay, it's going to be really expensive, um, <laughs> yeah. but I'll produce it because I like producing as well. I mean, that's one of those things where I thought I should just do my own, like work with the yeah. clients and hire out because there's so many great dietitians and food bloggers that have that on camera presence. So why don't, here we're thinking business here, you know, why don't I, love I it. just be the person to like call it all together for them? Um, and help do all the production because I really like doing that side of it as well. Well, and you know, those are uh, those are skills that you know a lot of people learn like on the job, right? That you yeah, know, yeah. Okay, hey, that was a very good cooking video. What made it so good? It's like, oh, right. here's the production uh, sort of outline and flow. And mm -hmm. so it's it's just really cool to see how you've evolved things over time. And uh, one of the things that I know you're doing, you know, in this being the queen of the cooking I love video, it. okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I put a crown when I, I know. I was like, mm, thank you. Uh, I did the post in my uh, stories. I was like, I'm gonna put a crown on her. Um, so hey, you know what? Maybe before we go on to, I uh, really uh, the the talk of the hour or 20 minutes or whatever we're on yeah. is the virtual snack date. But before we get to that, is there any like one sort of cooking video tip that you always keep true to your heart, like that you know when you do this one thing, it turns out great. I think it's always just remembering someone's on the other side of the camera. And so I really try to envision that person. And now because so much of what I'm doing when it's not TV, when it's, you know, whether it's a live or whether it's me doing something that's filmed um, and I know it's going to go out there, it's always thinking about the fact that I am talking to someone else, you know, and it ha trying really hard to have that one-on-one -on -one conversation. So it's not presentation mode, as I would, as I like to call it, when sometimes, you know, you're on a stage and there's 500 people around you and you're big and bold. I mean, I think you can still be big and bold and have personality, but remembering that someone's watching it, you yep. want them to feel like they're part of your conversation. So that's, I love that's that. what I always try to do. It's, it's great advice. And it's really, what I say is there's a difference between talking at people and talking with people, yes. right? And I have perfected talking at people, right? No, but like, oh my gosh, no, no. And then I so feel now, like, like the idea of really leaning into this, you know, sort of talking with people, it's, it's yeah. a game changer. It really is a game changer. So, all right, so your newest Instagram series is with your two girls. It's called Virtual Snack Date. How old are your girls? All right, so Ellie is eight and a half. Francis is six, going on about 16. Oh, you know, <laughs> the same age as Ellie, she thinks at least. So they are, we just finished kindergarten and second grade, which, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be done with our little homeschool curriculum. Um, they did really well with it, but... We are, we have moved on. We are in full summer mode now. We finished last week. So they are. Well, <laughs> summer mode in your house is now videos. You're like, girls, it's work time. I know. No summer mode in this house. Oh, yeah. No. Well, I mean, and they, they're funny because they've been doing some of these, some of the videos I have with them. I mean, Francis was three. So where she was really little. So there, that she, they, she still calls them her dot coms. Like, mommy, are we doing a dot com today? Uh, you know, and they'll they'll get the camera, and these are what I want to start posting. I love how Lindsay Green Bean lets Chase just have his own videos, and so I, the girls have said, and I have a couple that I'm like, do you want me to post it? Where they will be like, hi, I'm Ellie. 
welcome today to our dot com. I mean, and they will go, and it's it's a mimic of me. I see it. Oh yeah, which is I good mean, and bad because there are things I see them do that I'm like, ooh, I think they do that too. That might not be the best, but they love it. And so, and I've always told them. If you don't want to be in it, you don't have to be in it. If you want to be in it, I would love you to be in it. And like last good. week, hey, weeks ago. Good job being a momager, momager right? Yeah. The, the yeah. Whole, watching the, the whole Jenner family and like yeah. how she momagers their whole career. Uh, oh, That's yeah. going to be you. That's going to be you. Yeah. Well, you have to. I mean, because it's like the other day, for, we did something and neither of them wanted to be in it. And then, right, okay, you know, it was fine. Right before we started, Ellie decided she wanted to be in it. Frances didn't. She came out at the end. She was like, I just wanted to keep the dog today and make sure he was happy. And it's like, okay, that's fine. You know, you, you do you. And if you want to join in this, great. And if not, that's fine too. That's uh, wonderful. So, so how did this whole uh, virtual snack date come about? Like, you know, was it this uh, sort of pandemic uh, in the shower moment? Yeah, yeah, completely. I mean, it definitely was one of those things where once – we were out of school, which I guess our last day of school was March 13th. And oh, so that, that was a while ago. Uh, yeah, so we've been doing oh. this for a while. So we've done, I think, 27 or 28 videos now. Um, <laughs> yeah, I love this. I, I love that. Is churn, churn, churn. Gosh, that's amazing. That's just amazing. Random. But it's fun. I mean, we're, we're creating new recipes and bringing up old ones that have been on the site a long time. Um, but it really was one of those things where the girls just miss their friends. And so our school wasn't doing Zoom. Um, they had kind of made that decision when some crazy stuff happened with Zoom right there at the beginning that they just yeah. weren't going to Zoom. Yeah. Um, and so it's like, well, what's another way that the girls can interact with their friends? And so, and then I started hearing from my friends, their parents, um, all my child wants to do is eat. They just want snacks nonstop. And it was like, same thing over here. And so... I thought, well, this would be a really good kind of snack activity. So we're in the kitchen. We, we, we do simple snacks all the time. We do carrots and ranch and peanut butter and apples and, you know, all those good kind of kitty fun, easy snacks. But I was like, well, why don't we take some of this to another level of, of having a little bit of time in the kitchen where we're actually making something. And so we started telling a lot of our friends, like, jump on and we can chit chat. We can kind of have our snacks together. So it became our virtual snack date. Um, and it was just a fun way for them to to see friends. And then it kind of it kind of grew I, from You there. get a disco ball for that because I love it. I have like chills on my arm when the universe starts sending you little breadcrumbs of like, yeah. hey, and you you have slowed down enough to say, huh, me too, huh, me too. I'm spotting a, a problem here that I think I can solve. Yeah. And, I mean, that's just, it's such a beautiful, authentic start uh, to this. And that, you know, it really mm -hmm. is helping your girls connect with their friends. Yeah. And that's been fun. I mean, Brent has since, my husband has since gone back to work. So Brent, the videographer for a while, you know, it was easier because we have to be far enough away to see all of us. So it's kind of hard to read it. So Brent would sometimes, he wanted the best, you know, Hopefully he's not watching. But he would be like, oh, so-and-so's on. You know, we'd be like, Brent, who's on today? And he'd be like, oh, um, like, okay, never mind. You know, because I really like doing lives when you can have that dialogue. A lot of these have sometimes turned into us kind of presenting, asking questions, showing it, and then going back to fill in, you know, in the comments, just because we can't always read them. Um, but... You know, you, you work with what you what you have, and we've had to adapt. I mean, there's been some times that we've had to cancel because we just couldn't come up with the ingredients that we needed that day. Yeah. Or, you know, or it's been like, oh, in this recipe, we said to use, you know, I don't know, almonds, and we have none. So we're using walnuts, you know I mean? So yeah. it's really just been one of those where it, we've tried to understand that, you know, right now there's a lot of people having trouble finding flour. So I was doing a lot of baking like muffins and things originally. And then people would be like, what's the substitute for flour in this? And I'm like, you know, let's, let's pivot, you know, we'll come back to some of those. And, and so trying to use what we have on hand or what people have on hand or giving other suggestions. And of course, keeping things like, especially for kids, keeping things like allergies in mind. So we do a lot with peanut butter, but I know there's a lot of, you know, allergy kits. So it's like, we can, you can make it with sunflower seed butter, you know, whatever that might be. So just trying to find where people are and give them some ideas. We've, I mean, we've done fun things. Like we've made 
they're not all healthy. You know, we've made ice cream in a bag where you shake it, shake it, shake oh, it, shake ice cream. Is, you know what? I know fun. that, you know, people talk about like, you know, meditating and stuff. I'm like, yeah. you don't need meditation. What you need to do is just find a YouTube video of someone making ice cream in a bag. And it is like yeah. meditative and like, oh, oh it's yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Um, we I, no, we I love it. I love the, you know, people throw around the word a lot authentic, right? It's like, oh, authentic, authentic. So part of this is like, it truly is authentic how yeah. this started for you. And the other thing is that you have authentic content because you're actually listening to what's happening around you. You're not just like bulldozing through. It's like, okay, right. people don't have freaking flour. We're going to try something else here. Or like, you know, like you said, we are not going to do it today because uh, you know, we're having an off day or we can't have, and we have, have I mean, an idea or whatever. I love it. I think that's authentic. I think it's compassionate for yourselves and for others. I, I think it's so great. Have you had a, a snack that has really been like, you know, just gone crazy that is one of the absolute best ones so far? I think the one that people, you can probably hear my dog whining. He must be at the top of the stairs. Sorry. Um, I think the one that, there's been a few, but one that people really love and that really kind of, we did early on and it really embraced that idea of a snacktivity where it's a snack and an activity was rainbow toast. So we literally, you know, you have your piece of bread and you can use whatever kind of bread, gluten-free, you know, what, whatever kind of bread you like. And you can take milk, you can take water, but you can take milk dairy, almond, whatever you want. Um, and then you just put like a couple little drops of food coloring in that milk. Again, you can use natural food coloring. I mean, you were trying to make right. everybody happy. If people right. please are over here. Um, and then you take a paintbrush and you paint, you use all your different colors and you paint your toast. As you know, we made, we made sunsets and peace signs and flowers. Wait, and then, that, I, you know what? I would have thought that you would have had to mix it with some sort of yogurt or something so that the color would show up. It just, even if you no, use water, and then it you, shows up. And then you toast it, which you can toast it in the oven. But, you know, I was just, I was just going to pop this in the toaster and see what happens. So we popped it in the toaster and set it, you know, to kind of low. And it pops out. And all of a sudden, it's like the colors are really, really bright and vibrant. And it's, it's the same. And so then we made turkey sandwiches with it. You know, we ate it for lunch and the girls, yes! it was, that's it was so fun. It's okay, just something different is, and they yes. have a blast with it. Okay, but it is, I feel like that's different and my version of rainbow toast, because when I see it out in the world, it feels so drama. It feels so like, I don't know. And then you're, it's like, yeah. you have to like, you know, use it in a certain way or whatever. This yeah. is like, no, just you paint your toast, toast it up. Use it for a sandwich, bada bing. Use yeah, it for avocado okay. toast, whatever. I oh, yeah. love that. Oh, so if we are trying to see that episode, is this all on your IGTV? They're almost all, the, that was on IGTV, and I'll double check. I, I, IGTV and I, I mean, I, let's say some of my ones that are a little longer than 15 minutes, I'll cut them down. They're always on Facebook, on my page, Clever Full Living with Holly Granger. We, there are some that we, for a while, were able to make it work where we were doing Instagram Live at the same time, which was not a problem until, you know, life happens and things break and all that stuff. So I'm trying, I, at pretty much all of them, I think there's maybe about five missing, I am uploading to IGTV. Sometimes it takes literally like two days to upload. Yes, and bananas. I think there's just so many people on there right now doing yeah. stuff. So it's just well, but good to know. I mean, bottom line is yes. yada yada yada. Bottom line is most of your virtual snack dates yeah. are on Instagram Live, yes. and appreciate them because they're blood, sweat, and tears. Getting right? them That's really what you meant to say. <laughs> and a lot of them are on my blog as well. So okay. almost all, but maybe two or three. Um, I've been able to get up on the blog and share the video there so that if someone were to search it or want to find it another way, you know, it's, Love that. it's there. Love that. So trying to put them out there as well. Love it. Okay. So now, uh, we yammer, 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 yada, yada, yada here. I saw that you posted the, uh, future, uh, virtual snack dates items that you're going to be making. Yes. Um, here's what I know. I'm freaking out about the unicorn smoothie. <laughs> but easy, super easy. So I know we, one of the things we had talked about earlier, you know, what's your go to? What are you what are you cooking right now? I think right now we're cooking nachos. Um, we're cooking soup, Italian wedding soup. We have a shortcut version. Oh. And we're doing smoothies, smoothie bowls. And 
the girls have loved them. And we did a mo monster smoothie bowls one day for our virtual snack date. And, you know, showed how you can use different ingredients to make all the different colors. But with the rainbow smoothies, it's literally just like frozen strawberry, frozen uh, mango, frozen blueberries, some yogurt, a little bit of milk, and then, you know, blend, blend, blend. You could always add spinach if you wanted, all those good stuff, all that good stuff. Put it in your cup and then put a little bit of whipped cream on the top with fun sparkly sprinkles. A so fun straw or even like little, you So know, basically what you're saying is that you make these individual colors. So it's like a blueberry version and then you put it out of your blender and then you do a strawberry one, you put it out of your blender. If, if you want to make them high maintenance, yes. <laughs> if you want to make them high maintenance, you literally can do all the different colors. If you want to just blend it up and make life easy and, you know, have it all there with just the whipped cream and the sparkly sprinkles on top and put on you know we have we all have unicorn horns <laughs> we're big into unicorns here you know so you unicorn and then you get like a little strawberry or strawberry unicorn um straw or you know you can get like these little sparkly candles to make it look like a horn and just cut the wick off so it's really just about kind of the fun look and presentation and really with the kids a lot of times i find the more fun you make the name of it the more likely they are to try it you know so I was like, it's not broccoli. just kids it's not yeah. just kids it's not just kids it's it's, also, I, I, i'm like if you put all that stuff in a blender and called it like you know a garbage smoothie or something it's like uh, i don't really want that yeah you tell me you're throwing all that garbage still in there whatever you're putting a couple sparkle sprinkles on there but you name it a freaking you got me i was like a rainbow unicorn smoothie i want to drink that um, yeah. So, okay. So nonetheless, you usually post what your virtual snack date uh, items are going to be in advance. So people can sort of like look at it and watch you live. Do that. Yes. Yes. So we, we've been doing pretty much since we started, um, started back in March, we've been doing three a week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday at two central. Uh, I think after Labor Day and since we are kind of in summer swing. Memorial, gonna... Memorial Day or Labor Day? Well, I'm, I'm that far ahead of Memorial Day. I think I've said Labor Day 18 times. Memorial Day. You know? Okay, because I actually, I get, uh, you know what? I don't know. Time is yeah. warped, as we all know. It's like, what is happening? Oh, so uh, you've got Memorial some Day. Up. Hey, Holly's snack dates are amazing. That's, I mean, I you get, up. it's right uh, there. You. So, Memorial Day, whatever okay. this upcoming holiday is. Yeah, right now, Memorial Day. I mean, right now, it's like, I told the girls, I was like, I think it's Thursday. And they're like, no, Mommy, Tuesday. I mean, I need, I'm the one that, like, appreciates when people post on Facebook, like, P.S. today is Wednesday. And it's like, oh, yeah. thank you. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's just day over here. After Memorial Day, I think we're going to go to two a week and just kind of scale back a little bit. Um, we have so many now that we can repost and replay. And, and, and we may even go to one a week and, and do something else. I know a lot of people right now are struggling with lunches. And lunch boxes have been my thing for a long time. And so, you know, again, it might be, a, we might pivot a little bit. And I see, love it. But really, it's just kind of wanting to see what people need and then being there to help offer ideas for them. Because, you know, it's kind of one of those where it's like, I, I think everybody wants to give back in some sort of way during this time. And if, if giving parents ideas for what to make for a snack or what to make for lunch is something that I can help with, then you know, right. That, that's it's thing, definitely way. always win-win. It's like when yeah. you feel that you are living on purpose with purpose, it feels right, good right. to you and right. then it helps others. It's like win-win. So, all right. Uh, leading into what you just said, I okay. know that what uh, is coming up is bark for you. Yeah. You've got a virtual snack date. Uh, I think you've already posted it all about bark. And that to me seems like a kid and an adult solution because oh, yes. I know what people are emailing me and texting me is I cannot stop with the sweets. What do you do for a sweet tooth? Do you have any ideas? And so I call them DIY mini candy bars. Yeah. Uh, I oh, love yeah. the, the bark, right? Bark right, is, well, and where's that? I really love kind of the no recipe recipes where literally you just say, melt some chocolate, melt dark chocolate chips, melt white chocolate chips, whatever you want. You know, here it is. You don't have to do the well, double let boiler. Let me see it. But just have my, you know, yep. you don't have to do the double boiler. I like to just microwave them and just check them every 30 seconds. Yes. You know, make life easy. 
And then, yeah, we use whatever we have on hand for this. So a lot of times I've gotten to where I'll just buy the already shelled pistachios. And then oh, there's yeah. other times where I'll tell the girls, we have pistachios, start cracking, you know? Yeah. And then, yeah. it's an I think that's like the tagline for pistachios, yeah. like cracking. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They love it. And so sometimes, you know, I don't always drop the whole ones on. So I'll give them, again, all these activities that they can help with. I'll give them a baggie. I'll put them in there, you know, in a mallet or something and just say, crush them um, so that we can sprinkle. And that brings out the green, too. Um, and then we'll do, like, I have dried cherries today. But you can do dried cranberries. You can do coconut. I really like, like, for the adult version, I really like crystallized ginger. I think that's super yummy on it. And then I like to sprinkle like just with a little Florida salt, just, you know, kind of your big crunchy salt bites. You don't need a lot. You just a little bit for that little hint. Um, but you can always sprinkle with chia seeds. If you're going for something nut free, you can use sunflower seeds. We like to crush up pretzels. Um, a lot of times I will take the chocolate and add in a little bit of just a drop or two is really all you need of peppermint oil like oh, during yeah. the holidays and then put crushed candy cane on it. So we, we play with bark. I mean, I have another recipe that's not on the site yet, but white chocolate with, um, you know, sh like the shaved coconut and toasted almonds and tropicals. It's kind of more of a tropical flavor, but it's so easy. And it's, you know, it's kind of one of those. And, and we'll chat with the girls about like how to build a healthy snack. I mean, you know, the other day we made brownie donuts and it was literally brownie mix in a donut pan, you know? <laughs> And then we made a glaze and put sprinkles on it. And you know what it was like? That's what, sometimes you need a brownie donut and we can make brownies with black beans any day. And those are so good too. But sometimes you just, you just need a brownie donut. You know, but we paired it with some milk, you know? And so it's like, okay, let's, let's think about what's going to keep you full. So I there's all this uh, yeah. nutrition yeah. lesson working in, but at the same time, it, um, you know, it's, it's kind of a combination of just like, what's something fun and yummy, like, you know, like the ice cream in a bag. And then other days it's like, okay, what's something a little bit more nutritious? And we made bugs out of, you know, celery and carrots and tomatoes and peanut I love butter. That. And little gar and garden animals. Little, yes, yes. So you know what, though, I think that's such a, uh, you know, you as a role model, because I know, you know, mom stuff is like, people look up to you for that. Yeah. And so, like, having that right attitude of, right, and not everything has to be, like, supercharged with black beans and spinach and kale yeah. to fit into a plan. I think, you know, I think that's, you know, very well said and, and uh, you know, thoughtful for the audience that I know that looks up to you for that, you know? Right. Um, so, I love, so, bottom line is, here's what I think the homework is for the Pantry Party viewers. One, you've got to check out virtual snack dates. Whether or not you have kids or not, we all need virtual snack date. I love that. Yes. But then I think you're, you know, the thing, you know, it's like, yeah, we've heard of chocolate bark before. It's like, we've heard of it. But who's doing it? Because it's a great freaking solution. Yeah. And you can yeah. do it with whatever you have on hand. And it's like, lean into this idea. I, I think that was a very smart move of, like, highlighting it. Because mm -hmm. even though people may know about it, I don't feel like people are doing it. And it's such a great idea. Oh, and it's easy. And you can stick extra in the freezer and you have it. I mean, our freezer is so full of stuff right now that it's like, it's hard sometimes to walk by and be like, hmm, you know, what, what treat is in there today? But Love it. yeah, it freezes well. I mean, if you make it, if you make it with children that don't cough and sneeze on it, like we <laughs> sometimes do, you know. You can gift things if you if, 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 wear your mask and your gloves. If you can gift it to a neighbor. I mean, I know right now everyone's being very careful with germs. Yeah, but, right. I, but I do know that, you know, some things I've read have said, like, making a meal for someone else if in a washed hand, safe environment could be okay. So, yes, choose who you give it to and how you do it. And the recipient may or may not eat it. But, but you can, you know, there's, you can make small portions. You don't have to do the whole bag of chocolate chips. Yeah. You can do half a bag, quarter bag. So there's lots of different ways Love to this. be able to just um, customize it for what you're looking for. Girl, at Holly Granger. This was so fun. An e and Granger spelled like a grain because she's a dietitian. Oh, what yes. would you like the pantry party viewers to do? How can they get more of you? I think just, you know, following on Instagram. I'm posting a lot of those ideas there. Um, and really just having conversation we i did create you know sometimes it's hard because i am over on instagram or on facebook more than instagram so i'm trying to find the balance 
but I have a group over on Facebook called Easy and Fun Snacks for Kids. And so if there is a parent that's looking for ideas, it's a, it's a good conversation over there where it's not always just me talking, talking, or sharing, that if they have questions, but I'm really, I love getting questions. Like I love having that dialogue and when people say, hey, I tried this, or you know, you forgot to tell me this, or you know, whatever it is, <laughs> I'm always one to be yeah. like, yeah, thanks. But I think just connecting on social and, and if you see something you like, liking it or saying it, I mean, that's, I have more people say like, oh, I saw that. And I'm like, comment, tell me, you know, because right. sometimes you don't realize that people actually sure. do see it. And you kind of wonder like, I wonder if I'm doing this for no reason or if it's helping someone else. I mean, I think that's just being on the other side of social. So it's always, it's always nice to get feedback because then that helps me create something that I know people want and not just what I think they want. So it's, always you know, trying it's to figure the truth. out. And I, I mean, even though I would like to wrap it up, I'm just to, to piggyback on that is that's one of the things for me a lot. It's like, mm -hmm. you know what, put into the world what you want more of. And so it's like, right. I want more freaking comments. So I've been commenting and interacting more with others yeah. because I would like to receive that. So giving okay, more fun. love to get more love, you know, exactly. all that kind of stuff. I, you know, because I do think that can be freaking frustrating. It, it can, it, it is. I mean, especially when you do things and you're like, okay, that was a really good one. That was a fun one. Okay, there's only, you know, there's crickets. not a lot of views, but crickets. that's okay. Yeah, it's crickets. And it's like, you know what? It'll, it, it's there. So when somebody needs it and they search it, it'll pop up for them. And I mean, you just never know. I had Bell's palsy six and a half years ago and I wrote my story and it was kind of one of those things I just put out there thinking maybe this will help somebody someday. And I get dozens, especially lately, which is interesting, but I get dozens of emails a month. Um, that's some of my top traffic. And it's just one of those things where it's like when you put yourself out and share a little something extra, you just never know how it'll come back around. So yeah, acting is, is certainly the best fun way to do it. I love it. And hey, at, Holly Granger, thank you so much for so good the to talk to you. Today. Thanks for inviting me on. Oh my gosh, absolutely! And you've really uh, given us some snack inspiration, girl. Yay! Thank you. I'll be awesome. checking out that uh, whole rainbow smoothie later this week. Awesome, awesome! And I'll be using <laughs> snack inspiration for sure. I love it. I love, love it. you. Uh, we'll connect offline soon. It's good to talk to you. And thanks to everybody that checked us out today. Bye. Watch. It was so, so fun. That was another fabulous episode of the Pantry Party Show with at Holly Granger. Holly spelled with an E, and uh, Granger is like the grain, a Granger. Uh, she is uh, really wrapping up the virtual snack date. She has so many of them. So if you're looking for snack ideas, whether you have kids or not, she is a go-to hub. Uh, she really reiterated, uh, if you aren't making a chocolate bark, do so. Um, I'm a big fan of it. I call it DIY candy bars. Um, but anyway, that was very fun. Oh my gosh. You know, see, it's a good reminder that, you know, what's good for kids is fun and good for adults too. My goodness. So that's another episode of the Pantry Party Show. Until next time, sending you high immunity vibes, big love, and lots and lots of kisses.